Well, I am so honored to be here. Um, I, I tell you, oh man, the worship was so good this morning. Who enjoyed the worship today? Amazing. And I tell you, you, your church, Fountain of Life, is a blessed church. God's presence is in this place. And I want to give honor to my amazing twin brother, Pastor Harvey. <laughs> Don't we look alike? You know, I, I, I know you guys may get us confused, but uh, <laughs> let's put our hands together for the great Pastor Harvey. Such, such a powerful man of God. I really appreciate you, Pastor Harvey. You're such a kingdom man, and uh, I tell you, it's hard to find uh, men of God like him who really is, when you hear me say kingdom man, this is a man who believes in the, the teachings of Christ. He's filled with the spirit. He walks by faith. And it's hard to find that. You've got a lot of people who say, oh, I got Jesus, but he's a kingdom man. Kingdom men understand that they have authority. Oh, yeah, authority. That means so when the enemy comes to your home, you don't say, please, devil, get out. What does kingdom people do when the devil come in your home? <laughs> yes. So he is a kingdom man, and I appreciate you so much, my brother. He is so awesome, and I definitely thank God so much for my amazing wife. Let's put our hands together for my beautiful wife. This is the first time she has been in your country, and I think this is number three for me. Uh, this is number one for her, and uh, for those who don't know that we are expecting a little blessed child soon, so let's put our hands together for our wonderful. And I'm just amazed that she even came with me because for those women who have um, been pregnant before, you know that sometimes you can feel tired all the time, and, and my wife still came with me, and she, so I'm just so grateful for that. So. Um, I thank God for her. You are, she is such a tremendous woman of God, so I really appreciate that. So who's ready for the word of God this morning? This uh, teaching today is going to be a blessing to you, and I thank God for it. Last night, we had a great time with the young people. Thank you. Is any of the young people here from last night? All right, now, young people, they're not going to understand. Uh, nobody here is going to understand but you, but all the young people stand up. Okay, please have a seat. Now, to everybody else, you were probably like, what did that mean? <laughs> but all the young people know what that means. Y'all remember what that means? All right, so really the revelation was that when we asked the young people to stand up last night, everybody stood up and we told them to sit down and everybody just sat down. And we were talking about that's what trust looks like. Nobody asked the chair, are you going to hold me? They just sat. And I said to myself, what will happen if we can trust Jesus that way? He tells us to move. We go. But you know what we do with Jesus, you know. Um, can you give, can you, uh, I just want to make sure you're, you're going to hold me, Jesus. And I challenged the young people last night. We better not trust these chairs more than we trust Jesus. Because I did not see nobody in here turn around and look at the chair and say, are you going to hold me? You just sat because you trust. And this is what we want to do for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So listen, let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Let's get into some good teaching. Um, I got my instructions from the Holy Spirit. So I'm just going to share what he has given me. And we're going to let the fire of God fall in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, I pray that you bless this word today. Help me to share it the way you've given it to me. I remove myself out of the way and so you can have the freedom to speak. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to go to Matthew chapter 7 this morning. And we are going to read, start at verse 15. We're going to read verse 15 to verse 23.
If you have it, I want you to scream, I am blessed. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, it says this. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening, ravening wolves. Verse 16. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and is cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not every one that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Mm -mm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I don't know about you, but the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. And I hope that everyone here is ready to meet him. He is sooner than we all think. Many of us think, nah, it's gonna, I can still, you know, build a family. I can still do all these other things. And we have no idea that he is even at the door. So what is God looking for us to do while we wait for his return? He wants us to be sought in light. He wants us to represent his kingdom here on earth until departure. When Christ comes back, he is not coming back as this just regular man who walked the earth. He's coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So this day is coming soon. Sometimes as believers, we can forget that Christ is coming back soon. All the parents, raise your hand. So parents, you send your children to school, you send your children to the store, you send your children uh, to go play with their friends, and guess what? You are expecting them to return, correct? The moment they leave the house, everything in your mind knows, go and enjoy yourself. Go have fun. Play volleyball. Play soccer. I don't know what other sports... Uh, they may do have a good time but guess what you got to come back home and this is what Jesus pretty much said to the disciples he says listen I will be coming back again go preach the gospel heal the sick raise the dead he begins to give all these different things that he says because I am returning so you don't have that much time to do this so guess what? He gives us his spirit and he leaves all of us here and we have been waiting for him to come back. There's only one problem though. He left you here for a reason. And a lot of people don't know what that reason is. And that's my job today. Because we thought the reason why we're still here 
is just so we can gather like this, which is we have to do because the Bible tells us to do. But some people say, as long as I can just gather and then wait for Jesus to come, I am good. But Jesus have a different perspective. Jesus, one thing I've learned about Jesus is that Jesus don't like wasting anything. He's not a waster. He doesn't like stuff to just be here for no, no reason. He likes stuff to work. This is about to get really good. So if he left you here, he left you here so you could work. <laughs> I wonder how many workers we got in here. Now, I know you're a Christian. That's good. But are you working? And that's what we're going to talk about. Because every last one of you, you got something so specific to do before Jesus comes that one day you are going to stand before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he's going to say, what did you do with what I put inside you? And you got to say, here, Lord, I multiplied what you gave me. And if you stand before him and, and say, well, Lord, I, um, I went to church. Um, I went to youth group on Saturday. He's going to look at you and say, you wicked and slothful servant. The thing I gave you to multiply, you buried it because you were afraid. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So we got to figure out how we're supposed to work. So I'm going to ask if you can put the scripture back up where it says, verse, uh, let's put up verse 16. I want y'all to see this because we're about to walk through some scriptures. You shall know them by their fruits. Now, before he said this, he was talking about beware of false prophets. He was talking about beware is because these false prophets are going to look so much like real prophets. So he says, beware. He will never tell you to beware. If it was so clear, then he wouldn't put the word beware. That's why I love what John just said, the, the, how the, uh, the, the gentleman said, these young ladies can detect what car to get into. That's what you call training. They know, no, uh, they sense, no, not safe. Because we all know, uh, young people, we know last night that uh, there is a thing called good eggs and bad eggs. And every egg ain't good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, older people. Um, I know you're probably like, what are y'all talking about? Uh, but the young people do know. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is that he says, you shall know them. Who is the them? You shall know them by their praise the Lord. Oh, oh, you shall know them because they go to church on Sunday. Ah, you shall know them because they come down here and they leap for joy. This is Jesus. This is not. He says the only way you're going to know the difference. Look at fruits. And he's and guess what, guys? Fruits don't talk. Have now I don't know about y'all. But if I see a banana talking to me, I'm running. <laughs> I'm going to be like, you shouldn't be saying nothing to me. <laughs> I am running if a banana or an apple start going, hi, I'm an apple. I'm going to say, um, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. <laughs> what am I trying to show you? All of us right here can go out and, and look at some trees. And you can walk up to the tree and say, Ah, mango, banana, and the, and the fruit is just staying there. The fruit is just like this. And the reason why you can de detect that that's a mango, that's it's a banana, is because of the fruit. It's working. It's, watch this. 
it's about to get deep. It's doing what it, it was made to do. Mm -mm. He said, these are, this is the way you're going to understand it. Now watch this. Do men gather grapes of thorns and of thistles? Let's go to the next verse. I want you guys to watch this. Even so, every good tree will bring forth good words. Good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So watch this. The way you're going to get tricked is if you look at a corrupt tree and the corrupt tree says to you the right things. So the way you don't get deceived is when the good, when the bad tree starts talking to you, listen to the bad tree, let the, the bad tree, the bad tree's just talking, blah, 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 and say, oh, okay, praise the Lord. And then don't say nothing, just watch the fruits. And that's going to tell you. <laughs> so I have learned a long time ago, people will tell you, I love Jesus. But when you see fruits, you like. Um, hmm. So Jesus says, this is the way you're going to understand it too. Now it's about to get more deep. Let's go to the next verse. A good tree cannot, everybody say cannot, bring forth evil fruit. All the good trees make some noise. So what Jesus said is if you're a good tree, your fruits is going to line up. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruits. Next scripture. Every tree, now this is about to get deep. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruits is hewn down and cast into the fire. Did you notice that this whole thing we're reading is talking about fruits? He says that the thing that I'm going to reject is the tree that don't produce fruit. Who made the tree in the first place? So why would he cast down something that he made? Does that make sense? You want to know why he's going to cast it down? Because when he made it, he made it for it to produce something. And when it doesn't produce what he made it to do, uh-oh. Oh, Jesus. So let me give you another story that just so you can understand it. Jesus one day was walking with his disciples, and he was hungry. And he goes to this fig tree. And Jesus walks up to the fig tree, and the scripture says he couldn't find any figs on the, on, the, on the tree. So Jesus says, you will no more grow fruit from here on after, and Jesus walks away. The scripture says the next morning, you can read this, this is Mark chapter 11. The next morning, Peter walks, they walk past the tree, and Peter says, Jesus, the tree that you spoke to is withered and dried up. And Jesus says, have faith in God. He said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, it shall be cast. Now, the question is, why did Jesus curse the fig tree? Somebody tell me. It didn't produce fruit. Raise your hand if you believe before Jesus went to the fig tree that he loved the fig tree. Because he made it, right? So, he, of course, he loved it. So when he went to it, he went to it because he says, I'm going to go to this tree because this tree is going to produce why I planted it. And when he went to it and he didn't see the fruit, that's when he said, you're good for nothing. Now, let's go to verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Verse 21. Now, oh, that's about to get deep right here. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. How many of you can declare that Jesus is your Lord? So this is all of us. We all say, Lord, Lord. He says, not everybody who say that is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of of my Father which is in heaven. So the way, let me connect this to the fig tree. 
Not everyone that, not every fig tree that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but every tree that bringeth forth figs, which was made by heaven. So the person who is doing the will of the Father, and the will of the Father is to be obedient to his will, to serve him, to represent him here on earth, and to do what he put you here to do. That is the will of the Father. He says, those are the, he said, there's going to be some people who's going to say, Lord, Lord, but they never produced figs. It's about to get deep. I hope y'all ready for this. Let's go to the next scripture. Many, everybody say many. many. That's scary. I can stop right there and we can, we can uh, preach on that for three weeks. Y'all know how much many is? Mucho. <laughs> many is a lot. So that actually means that there will be a lot of people who will say, Lord, Lord. Then there will be a lot of people who will start telling the Lord what they did while they were waiting for his return. And look at the stuff that they said. Did not we prophesy? Did not we cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. So we, we should all, how many of you would agree? Well, the, the Bible is right, but I just want you to understand. When you look at, look at those works prophesied in the name of Jesus. They cast out devils in the name of Jesus. And they did wonderful works. How many of you would say, these people should make it? I mean, if you look at that. This is what most people go, this is what most Christians want to do. We want to prophesy. We want to, we want to cast out devils. And, and Jesus is like, um, that don't impress me. What impressed me is for you to do what I called you to do. Mr. Fig. Mrs. Fig. <laughs> so we, we can clearly see that from Jesus' perspective, he's not as is, is, is impressed with the prophecies and all this stuff like we are. Because he's telling you that there's people who's going to do this and they still ain't making it. And remember, the first word says many. So let's go to the next scripture. Now, this is humbling. And then will I, who's the I here? Jesus. Everybody shout his name. Jesus. Then will Jesus profess unto them, who is the them? The people who prophesied, the people who cast out devils, and the people who uh, did great works. I, Jesus, Never, what, what else it says? How, in, how could that be that these people did this great work and the one they working for said, I don't know what you're doing. I don't even know you even though you were working in my vineyard. This is Jesus talking, guys. That is the scariest scripture in the Bible. That you could be actually doing good things and Jesus says, I don't even recognize you because you're not doing the will of my Father. So let's talk about the will of the Father for a bit. I, I, I'm going to bring it to an analogy that I hope it helps you guys with. So look on stage here. We see this wonderful piano. And... Um, you know, this is a nice piano, ain't it? It's nice and black and long and, you know, nice and clean. If I got on this piano and turned it on and I tried to play the piano and no sound come out that piano, would that piano be doing the will of this father? And why would not, why wouldn't it be doing the will of the Father? 
because it's not working. <laughs> now, watch this. This piano looks good. And guess what, guys? This piano is in church. <laughs> it's closer to the altar than most of you. <laughs> but if that piano do not produce sound, it is, in Jesus' words, good for nothing. Mm-mm-mm. So somebody tell me, if that keyboard says, I don't want to play any notes, but I want to prophesy. I want to cast out devils, and I want to do good works, but I'm not going to play. I don't want no sound to come out of me. Would that keyboard be doing the will of the Father? Wow. That's scary. Wait a minute, though. Let me run to the drums. If I sit behind that drum set and I go, don't worry, those were in tongues. Um, <laughs> if I go, but you don't hear no sound. Those drums are good for nothing. But wait, wait. But look how beautiful it looks. It's gold. It looks beautiful. It's in church. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, can I ask Fountain of Life a question? If that keyboard really don't work, would y'all keep it on the stage? You guys are mean. <laughs> Have a little compassion for the piano. <laughs> Be patient with the thing. It's, it's, it's still struggling through some demons or something. <laughs> so you mean to tell me this amazing piano, if it don't produce, even you guys will take it and cast it out. So when Jesus saves you with his precious blood, he did not just save you to just sit here and go like this. He looking for some notes to come out of you. And the question is, did you turn off your keyboard because you're too afraid? Oh, Lord, I don't want to. I don't want nobody to know I'm a Christian. I'm just going to. You know. Remember, guys, he's coming soon. And you're going to have to give an account to your piano. <laughs> so when he come to you, can I use you, sir? Can I use you? Can you stay right here for me? Everybody give him a hand. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Jesus is going to walk up to him. My wonderful keyboard. You gave your life to me. I'm, I appreciate that. Um, what have you done on earth? I left you on earth for a few years so people can hear the beautiful sounds out your piano. Um, I look at your record and for some reason, you, every time somebody tried to play you, you kept going, don't touch me. <laughs> and then another person come over, ooh, look at this keyboard, ah, don't touch me. <laughs> Jesus is going to say, um, I made you, I went to the cross just so people can play you. And you've rejected everyone that I sent to you. Who would like to stand before Jesus that way? So can y'all tell me what should be one of the first things we should be doing after we accept Christ in our heart? Finding out, am I a piano? Am I a drum set? We call that purpose because he put something inside you on purpose. That's why you're still here because he wants people to be blessed by your piano. 
So let's give God praise for this wonderful piano that's not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you can have a seat. <laughs> so you guys see how serious this is? Jesus is coming. And he's going to ask you, what did you do with the talents that I've given you? So he says, many people is going to say, but Lord, Lord, I went to church. Lord, Lord, I, I just, now, can you imagine some of us doing this? I know nobody here is going to do this, but just imagine. Imagine if some of us, God made us to be this beautiful keyboard. In all of our life, we look at the acoustic guitar and get jealous. I wish I can be wood. I wish I could have strings like that guitar. And you spending all your energy comparing yourself to somebody else's purpose. <laughs> Father have mercy. So Jesus says, Mr. Keyboard, if you start to be what I called you to be, you're never going to be jealous of somebody else. You're never going to want to compare yourself to somebody else. I made you that way on purpose because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So when he took this young lady right here, he said, I'm going to make her with this personality. I'm going to make her with, I want her to look this way, this personality. I want her to have these gifts, all of this for my name's sake. And then he leaves her here and says, I want you to stay there and do what I called you to do, and then I'll come back. And most people is sitting here waiting for Jesus, and, and Jesus, are you coming tomorrow? And Jesus is like, you didn't even get out of the piano box yet. Every time I send people to play you, you keep rejecting them. Why would I come back now? I love you so much that I'm giving you time to figure out what I put you here to do. So I'll give you a perfect example. I'll use myself as an example. Four years, I did not know. I went to church. I was, I was seeking God, and I was trying to serve him. And I'll be honest, the first few years of my, my, my walk with the Lord was very difficult because when I, when I got saved, I was so grateful for what Jesus did in my heart, but I never knew why he called me. I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know my calling. And so the first few years of me being saved, I went to church, but I was suffering internally. And I'm just telling you, I was suffering with some depression. And I'm going to tell you why I was depressed. I was depressed because... He made me to be this, and I did not know it. So when you don't know what God put you here to do, you're going to start feeling sad. Even though you come to church and you praise God, but then you go home, you're like, there's got to be more. There's something I'm missing. The only thing that's missing is that you don't know how valuable you are. <laughs> The moment I discovered that he made me to be this, oh my Lord, I felt like I wasn't jealous of nobody. I was free in the spirit. Now, this is going to blow your mind. That piano will never be happy until somebody play it. Do y'all think that piano's happy right now? The moment the young lady get up and play it, that, be hand, that piano go say, hallelujah. I was made for this. The moment Richard banged them drums, them drums go say, I'm doing the will of my father right now.
So I can tell you right now, if you want to tap into this, the deeper level of God, find out if you're acoustic guitar, drum, or piano. <laughs> and then watch this. And then let people play on you. That's where you feel the joy of the Lord begin to start stirring up inside your spirit. So, let's go back to the scripture. He says, not everyone, this is going to be verse 21. Not everyone that say it, say it, Lord, Lord, shall enter, but he that do the will. He that doeth the will of the Father, which is in heaven. I can tell you right now, the moment you begin to find out, Lord, what is your will for my life? There is going to be such an anointing that's going to fall on you. Because that anointing was for you to be the piano. So if you want to find out where you're, you're, if you want to experience the power of God, be the piano that he called you to be. So most people are trying to seek the glory of God, but they lost their purpose. You know what's so funny? Uh, I was watching the birds uh, this morning, and I was just sitting there looking at the birds fly, and I said to myself, Did these birds ever go to a, a bird's college to learn how to fly? How do they know how to fly? Somebody tell me. They just, they're born, and the next thing you know it, not too long ago, they start doing something like this. Who taught them how to do that? Now, I can tell you right now, if a bird came on stage and started walking like me, he's not going to be happy. But if a bird flies through here, he's doing the will of his father. <laughs> now, I'm about to ask you guys a quick question. I want you to think about this. What did God put you here to do? I'll give you a second to think. Why did he put you here? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Have you ever noticed that you don't look like nobody else? Why is that? Why can some people sing and some people can't? Have you ever noticed that? Why are you good at certain areas and in certain areas you don't know how to do nothing? <laughs> Is it that your king said, I need this person just like this. And when I get them just like this, they are going to do the will of my father, which is in heaven. Now, the part that I really want to tell you guys is that um, these wonderful drums that we're looking at right now, they went through something called process. Because when those drums first started, they were wood. Now we're looking at, you know, nice round tom-toms and bass drums. and So, the thing I love about doing the will of the Father, is that in order for you to really know what God made you to do, he puts you to do something called process. So when he puts you through the process, sometimes he puts you through situations um, that kind of hurt. And what he's really doing is not trying to hurt you, he's doing this. you like, ow! Why did that happen? Could it be that he's making a drum set out of you? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So as of today, every time you guys go through something, a fiery trial, a test, I want you to say, hallelujah, I'm being made. <laughs> so the believer don't look at suffering the same way. The believer looks at suffering as I'm being made to be a piano. That's why I'm going through this, Doris. God is making me so I can produce the best version of myself for his kingdom. Raise your hand if you had any challenges this week. I know you said, why am I going through this? But up in heaven, he's like, yes. I'm shaving off that one part right there to make the tom-tom look nice and round. <laughs> so for the believer, you're really not going through anything. For the believer, it's called being made. So the next time you go through pain, say hallelujah. Thank you for making me, Jesus. You're making me for your glory. You're conforming me into the image of your dear son. You are doing this, God. You are behind us because I put my trust and hope in you. So he says here, many people is going to be trying to do everything they can to not be a drum set. And they're going to try to come to church. They're going to try to do everything, but they don't want to do what God called them to do. And God says, those are the people that is going to be in Matthew chapter 7. So if I was you, I would be asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what did you give me? So with my personal life, I said, once he revealed to me, that one of the assignments of my life was to teach the word of God, to be a teacher of the word of God. When I was clear that that was one of my assignments, I stayed focused on that because I said, this is what the things that he put me here to do. And guess what? He gave me the personality he gave me. He gave me everything to be the teacher that I am today. That's why you will never hear another person teach like me because there's only one of me. He did that on purpose. And you wouldn't know why that I'm just so free up here and I'm just walking around and I'm just like laughing sometimes and I just, myself. You want to know why? It's because Jesus is coming soon and I don't have time to try to oppress nobody. I want to see him face to face and hear Jesus say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter to the joy of the Lord. I put you there to be Nathan and you were Nathan and you represented me very well. I'm going to say Hallelujah. But imagine that I get in front of Jesus and he says, what were you doing with the time? You cannot be Pastor Harvey Nathan, so why did you try for 30 years to duplicate him? Wow. I only made one Pastor Harvey and there will never be another. When Pastor Harvey stayed before the Lord, the Lord will say, well done. Because of your obedience, you have brought many through my gates. So we need to be happy for Pastor Harvey. My concern is you. Jesus is coming and you got to give an account. So let me read a scripture just so you understand that this is going to happen. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me read this because... A lot of people don't understand that this is actually going to happen very soon. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We were just doing a teaching at this at our church, and I just wanted to show you this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 5 verse 9 and 10 says this. He says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. Um, okay, good. Thank you. They're awesome back there. Thank you, guys. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Verse 10. For we must all, everybody say all. all. 
appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one of us may receive the things done in his body according to that have been done, whether it be good or bad. So every last one of us, everybody on the front row, second row, third row, fourth row, you are all going to be standing before Jesus Christ one day to give an account. And when you hear me say things like he's coming soon, what I'm trying to do is tell you, you better get busy with what he calls you to do because you're about to have to cash in soon. <laughs> now, one of my favorite stories in the Bible, I, preach, I love preaching from it, comes from Matthew 25. Because you have three servants. Can I use uh, three um, we, yeah, let's take the first three. Let's give them a hand as they come down here. You guys can line up right in front. This is in Matthew 25. The master comes. He gives one five talents. He gives another two. He gives another one. And the Bible says, then the master leaves. Just go. These three are left. Somebody tell me why did they stay? They had a purpose. Thank you. So the Bible then says the master was gone for a long time. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 something years ago. People still thinking, oh, he's never coming back. But the scripture says he's coming soon. And the scripture says he was gone a long journey. Then he comes back. Finally, he comes back. And he goes to the one with the five and says, okay, Mrs. Five, <laughs> give an account. And guess what Mrs. Five says? She says, I took the five that you gave me. I multiplied it. Now I have ten. And she gives me the 10. Thank you. <laughs> she gives me the 10. And he says to her, well done. He did not say well done because she went to church. He said well done because she multiplied what he gave her. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It was so important to him that he says, Enter into the joy of the Lord. So you can go to your seat now because you did a great job. So let's give number five a great hand. Yeah, she made it in. Now he walks to the second one, Mrs. Two. And Mrs. Two says, I knew you were coming back. And I took the two and I multiplied it and I got four. And so she gives to the master. The master takes it and says, oh, my God, you weren't just down there on earth just in prayer services. You were actually multiplying, too. <laughs> you were working. He says, well done. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Let's give Miss Two a hand. <laughs> now, the master is really happy right now because he's like, man, I gave the first two theirs and she, she multiplied it, and she made a bunch more pianos. And then the other one, she became, she was a drum, and she made more drums. <laughs> and so he's now really happy. So he comes to the one with the one. He says, hey, Mrs. One, <laughs> let's see what you got. And she says, um, now this is scary what she's about to say. She says, I knew, she, this is her, I knew you were a hard master. So that actually means she had a relationship because she knows her master. So she has a relationship, guys, this one right here. She says, I know, she knows him. She says, I know that you're a man who wants a return on his investment. She said, but I was a little afraid to be the piano. So I kind of, I kind of, Jesus took what you gave me and I just, you know, 
didn't do nothing with it. But I know you love me, Lord. You know, I, you know, I know you love me. I know you're not caring about that because, you know, I pray every day. I sing in the worship team every day. You know. And the Bible says he did not look at her and say, oh, I understand. Yes, it was hard down there, and I, I know. And so, yeah, I, I'm a loving God, so don't even worry about that talent I gave you. Can y'all tell me what he said to the lady with the one? You wicked and slothful servant. Jesus says that. The master says that. He did not say that because she lived a life full of sin. He said that because she buried the very thing she was put here to do. We keep thinking Jesus is going to say that because of sin. And yes, we know how sin is. We, we're not saying that people. Gonna, but what he's saying now is. I am upset that I put you on earth and I left you here a long time to produce and you buried it because you were afraid of who? Now the part of the Bible that that when I read, I get a little nervous because it says when she did not produce, he did not say, well, because I still love you and I understand you can enter. He says, cast this unprofitable servant away. Y'all know that's in the Bible, right? Y'all need us to put it on the screen so y'all can see it? Because I know know we think, the Jesus we think is, oh yeah, I can do whatever I want to do. Yes, I'm going to make it. Hallelujah. I don't need to do it. The Jesus we serve is coming back for an event. He wants a return on his investment. (laughs) So here, look at this. y'all. Look at this nice, pretty face. You don't think Jesus will have a little compassion on that face? Jesus is like, okay, I made that beautiful face, but guess what? I put you here to do something, and you didn't do it. So I need you to be cast away. No, you really don't have to go over there. So your cast away is over there. <laughs> so. <laughs> So what I'm trying to show you guys is, look at that, and cast the unprofitable. Unprofitable. That means a piano that's not working. That means a bird that's not flying. That means a drum set that's not making sound. That means, young people, a microphone that can't amplify. (laughs) He said, that's the one I don't want in my kingdom. Mm-mm-mm. Lord have mercy so I came today the Holy Spirit told me to tell each of you it's time to get busy because he's coming soon please 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 hear me when I tell you we are so close to seeing Jesus this is not a cliche this could be our last time here on this earth today. We can walk out the door and that can be it. And I do what I, I want to say this. If you are here and you don't know Jesus, if I was you, I wouldn't play with this thing no more. When he died on the cross for you, guess what? When he died on the cross, when he was on that cross, he had you in mind. He said, you know what? I love this person right here. They may not know yet what I did for them, but guess what? I've died for their sins. If you don't know Jesus, I'm going to ask you to stand up if you don't know him. Because I believe we're in a house full of believers today. But just to be safe, if you don't know him, please stand. Because you don't want to miss this opportunity. Now, if everybody here is saved, if you are a Christian, raise your hand. Good. Now, this is for you. Don't let fear stop you from doing what God called you to do. Because you're about to give an account to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, very soon. 
So I always tell I always tell people this. Believers, you have two you have two opportunities to transition. That transition can happen from you dying and then you transition or from you living until Christ returns. But you will see him very soon. So this morning, my word of encouragement to everybody is let's let the Holy Spirit reveal to us what he's called us to do. This morning, I feel I felt I felt led in my heart. I felt led in my heart to pray for anyone who is struggling with what you're put here to do. You know you're saved, but you're like, Jesus, what am I supposed to be doing? I can tell you right now, the moment you find your assignment and your purpose, your life, God is going to bless you so much because guess what? You got, again, like I said to you, the anointing is on your assignment. The anointing is you are anointed to do this thing. Thank you, worship team. So I want to pray personally for every person who the Holy Spirit was speaking to today and you kept hearing in your heart, Lord, I want to do the will of my Father. I know I'm saved. You know that I want to please you. But I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bury this talent because I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then some of you, you know what you're supposed to do and you're not doing it. Them are the people I want to pray for today. So if this is you, I'm going to ask you to come down front. If you're really seeking clarity of what God put you here to do, please come down front. I'm going to pray with you personally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if there's uh, some of the elders at the church who can come down and help me because I'm going to pray for, we're going to pray for these vessels here. When I come over and I pray with you, I'm praying with you that you can hear the Holy Spirit begin to deposit in you what he has put inside you. Some of you are supposed to be writing books. Some of you are supposed to start a business. Some of you support, and all of this, this is for his glory. This is not just for, he wants, he, he's looking for you to rule and reign, to represent the kingdom of God here on earth until he comes back. And he's giving you a uniqueness to do that. So when I pray for you today, my prayer is that something inside your spirit will say, you know what? I want to do the will of my father who sent me. I'm going to ask you a question. I want everybody in the audience. I want you to hear me. If Jesus would have came on this earth and he would have healed the sick, if he would have raised the dead, if he would have did all those things and then get to the cross and say, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to die. Do y'all, would y'all say he had fulfilled his assignment? I proved my point. So what's more important, healing the sick, raising the dead, or Jesus getting on that cross? They're all important, but guess what? If he did not get on the cross, we would not be here today. <laughs> so if he would have got to the garden of Gethsemane after he raised Lazarus from the dead, after he did all that, if he would have got to the garden of Gethsemane and said, I ain't doing this. Look at all the people that would have been affected because of his fear. That's why he said, nevertheless, not my will, 